Well, hello, hello, hello. How's your day going? Mine is phenomenal. I'm getting ready to go outside. Unfortunately, not quite as warm as yesterday. Some of you all must have got upset with me bragging about my heat and sent me down some cold weather. Now, why would you do that? I'm going to be going out a little while and uh, try to prepare a little bit. It seems we're going to be getting down into the 30s. There's even rumor of 20s. Now, I'm down here in San Antonio area. East of San Antonio, south of Austin, and west of Houston. Can everybody understand me? Hear me okay? I don't know about the volume on this and everything. I think we're okay. Um, welcome, welcome. I rarely get to see the comments. My moderator, that's the guy on the left shoulder right here, and my producer, the guy on the right shoulder over here, whom you'll never see unless you look at me. Um, well, we're trying to go ahead and get this out, and, um, and eventually the comments appear. So, hello, welcome, and if you do get on, Facebook's helping me out by keeping things a little bit crooked here. Good morning. Hey, Houston, good. Oh, you stopped by? Well, let me know ahead of time. Um, I tend to be a little busy. So, what I'm here today is talk about is two specific things. Synchronicity. Everybody seems to know that word. They think they understand that word. What is synchronicity? Okay, synchronicity is how things just seem to be just timed right. So you run into that perfect por per person. Hi, Tina. <laughs> Caused me confusion. I'm actually getting some messages today. People are watching. Hey, that's cool. Um, once upon a time, when having 72,000 followers, they used to send it out to people. Hey, Greg, welcome, welcome. Um, oh, 11 year olds. Those are the ones I'm trying to reach, by the way. That is it, absolutely. Um, she needs to come over here and build herself a, a playhouse that becomes her first little house out in the yard with a camera in it, of course. <laughs> and uh, definitely want to help her out, Greg. This is my goal. It's these kids I'm reaching to. Synchronicity. Why? It's because. I've been doing this for 10 years, 12 years. And most of my videos don't reach anybody to speak of. I mean, a few thousand people, 10, 20,000 people. In a world where there's billions, 20,000 people is nothing. 50,000 people is nothing. 100,000 people is nothing. That's why this book, written for your daughter, as a matter of fact, and others, is about wibbly and wub about this little earthworm that comes with little English racing cap and some warfarin glasses as an avatar to this young man in his dreams and tells him, hey, you got a job, guy. Quit forgetting. Get to work. Wake up. In the morning. Don't just sleep. When I was young, I was about 14, 13, 14. I was pretty depressed. We had moved um, from Germany that time. My first love of my life. Jeanette Geranilla. I still remember her name. I was what? 13, 14, 15, maybe. And we moved back from Germany. She was Filipino. In the Army, you're all the same. There ain't no black, white, Filipino, and all that stuff. You're all the same in the Army when you're poor people, sergeants and privates in the Army. They took care of that early on. When you go to war, it don't matter what the color of the guy next to you is. He's a soldier, man. He's your buddy. He's, he's going to save your life or you're going to save his life. doesn't matter what color he is. That stuff, that's civilian shit, for the most part. It shouldn't be anywhere. There should be no discrimination. We're all beings. Hey, Shelly. Kansas, glad to see y'all. Florida, hey, man. You know what? Thank you, thank you. What this is all about is reaching out to everybody to help make this book, this story, happen without getting censored. Because why are you going to censor some old stupid guy talking about all this crazy crap? on a story about wibbly and wub. Synchronicity? Well, the synchronicity is exactly that. They're randomly seeing things and then paying attention. Perspicuity. You know, I was over 60 years old before I found out what the word perspicuity means. You know, when we were young, we heard about how Orwellian the world might become, where your words wouldn't mean what they meant when we were young. And it's happened. Luling, hey, now in Phoenix. Mmm, that's a bit of a different weather, not to mention social <laughs> climate. Uh, we're outside of Luling in a little place called Salvage, Texas. And since you're from Luling, you know why we're outside of it. It's a good place to be from. 
some good people there, but for the most part, they don't want to stay around unless there's something to do. Same problem in all the towns. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to go ahead and give reasons for people to want to stay in their small town with their grandparents and their parents. And how do you do that? You create opportunity. Synchronicity. That's having it appear at the moment you need it to appear. It's not going to do you any good to have that car appear out there in your driveway with a key in it the day you break your legs and you're stuck in bed and can't go out there. And you only got one day to get to that car and it's yours. Oops, wrong day. That's not synchronicity. That's that's a tease. You get teased all the time. Georgetown, hey, you look closer to me. Long ago, Jamie. Okay, hey. Um, yeah, you might notice I'm my names. I'm not real good at names. California, hey, now we're getting some spread there out there. Oh, it's we got across the whole country almost. Now my following on my newsletter. I have a newsletter I do, by the way. Um, there's a possible sign up. I think they're still available somewhere on my site. You can sign up for the newsletter. I try to do only one a month. I don't bother people trying to sell them anything. Generally, I got very little to sell, actually. Um, for the most part, what I'm trying to sell is an ideology. And my materials I have, those get sold so I can support my ideology and write this book. What's different about this book that I'm writing is that it's a multimedia format. It includes reality. Yeah, the Matrix. We get to write the Matrix. Most people don't understand that. Yeah, we come in as human beings, but we're not limited to the limitations that people want to put on us. I say people, those in control of us, want to put on us, those who don't want to be controlled. In the book of Wibblery and Love, not reality, of course, that means that, uh, let's just say you're in government and somebody uh, doesn't like what you got to say and they decide they just nix your ability to say it somehow or another. They take your ability to vote on panels and make you look like a crazy person. Oh, hmm. oh that means they make you look like me. Why? Because I'm a conspiracy analyst. Easily confused with conspiracy theorists. Now, a theorist would be a conspiracy theorist would be somebody like Oh, let's say AOC, a, a, a woman who just made up stories out of lies. Lies. That's the difference between a conspiracy analyst who uses facts and says, hey, there's conspiracy. Um, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, and that's the idea. The conspiracy analyst, he says, hey, wait a second, let's look at the facts. Hmm. Somebody shoots a bullet, it flies down in a straight line, and it hits and bounces around, goes through car doors, or hits somebody in the head, hits their bone. And this piece of lead, mind you, flying at 700,000 feet a minute, bouncing around, is going to get deformed. That's just sheer logic. So that's an analyst. An analyst is going to say, you can't shoot a bullet and hit objects without the bullet being deformed as it ricochets and hits objects. Bones, doesn't matter what it is, the bullet is going to change shape. Now, if you're a conspiracy theorist, you'd say, well, there was 100,000 bullets fired in one time. That's not true. That's totally theory because you got no evidence whatsoever. But on the other hand, if you went out there and gathered evidence and said, hey, wait a minute, that bullet that fell out on the gurney after it went through everybody and it fell out of the president's head, which means it penetrated some serious bone and it looked like a bullet, like a little tiny bullet sitting on the end of a, of a shell. So you got this is your bullet shell, and the little teeny bullet over here, that's at the end of it, supposedly came out of that and traveled, Ooh, and bounced around and hit a bunch of people. Extremely accurate. Now, synchronicity is being in the right place at the wrong place at the wrong time at the right time, correct? Perspicuity is having the acuity of perspective to see what's really going on to see if this is an opportunity or if this is a trap perspicuity acuity of your perspective your perspective de determines your perception now if my perspective is a uh, radical leftist and I'm, uh, I'm I think everybody in the world should have mandatory income $2,000 a month every month everybody no matter what Wait a second. Who's paying that? 
I don't care. Everybody deserves it. They gotta have it. It's the only thing. Well, that's a perspective. My perspective in that response was another perspective. Who's gonna pay for it? Where's the money coming from? Well, I don't care. Just give it to me. Give it to me. Uh, wait a minute. Stop. Now, a conspiracy theorist would say, hey, well, you're being set up. They're just setting you up. They expect a lot for nothing. You got to give something back in a society. If you don't give of yourself. If you don't give, it doesn't have to be a lot. Let's just say you only have $1,000 to your name, but you give somebody $100. You're going to feel good, believe it or not. Yeah, you won't be as rich, but you're going to feel good. Why? You feel better giving than you do taking. Although some people are pretty deceived by that taking thing, making them feel better. Why? Because they're taking everything you got and they go out there and they drink and they do drugs and they buy all sorts of things and they think that's making them happier. Now, nah. In fact, the more things you get and the more fear you have of losing them, the less happy you are. Perspicuity is I got all these things and from my perspective... All you homeless people, well, you're homeless because you just deserve to be homeless. And that's, a, that's a perspective. Boom. Not a good one. But it's a perspective. Now, if some people have that perspective, and you put out there that, hey, we should have a vote, and instead of just giving me money, why don't you give me some opportunity? Why don't you train me to build tiny houses out of Trash, for example, out of salvage so I can go out there and build houses for my community. Why don't you subsidize that with government money? So now, instead of just giving me money, you've empowered me. I believe there's a man named Jesus once upon a time that suggested that instead of giving the man fish and having him be dependent on coming back to you over and over and over again to get fish, teach the man to fish. He'll appreciate it. He'll actually thank you because now he can feed his family without coming to beg. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as far as studying how to live off the land, yes, absolutely. Jason, the Indians there in Arizona, and I highly respect, highly respect tradition. The Hopi, the Lakota, as a matter of fact, were in that time. The sky is being turned to lace. Chemtrails, anybody seen that kind of thing? Or contrails, what do you want to call it? In the Lakota, that was one of the signs of the times. Also, the rise of the, I love this part, I love this part. It was brought to me by a professor out of New Mexico. Came out here and told me this a long time ago. When the snake tribe and the turtle tribe rise again, it's the end of the old system and the coming of the new. Well, the turtle tribe is the tiny houses on wheels, believe it or not. It is the ability to pick up your house and move. It is the nomadic tribes. Turtles, got your home on your back. Now, the second thing was the snake tribe. What's a snake tribe? Sounds like a scary thing if you don't like snakes. Well, think of it this way. And this is a little bit interesting, and I may have this a little wrong, but this is my interpretation of it. The snake tribe, they come in and figure out how to use the venom of the snake to kill the snake and become immune to it themselves. That's kind of like Darby even still being on Facebook and YouTube, in spite of being shadow banned 10 years ago, trying to still rebuild and be that thorn. Because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm writing a book. This is fantasy. This is fiction. I'm not commenting on the news directly. I'm just using it as part of my foundations for the book that was published in the future. You don't believe in the future and the past and time travel. Well, that's up to you. Hmm. 1800s, anybody? There was a time we had atmospheric energy. There was a time in the past, about the time that book was written about barren 
Trump. Yeah, there was a book written in the 1800s about Baron Trump and Trump Towers and some of the things that might happen. Now, and isn't that as interesting as heck that some man could come up with a story? Time travel, time travel, time travel. How could that be possible? That's Twilight Zone crap. Synchronicity and perspicuity. Just because you don't know it to be real, you don't have proof. Is it real? Yeah. I ask this question because I ask a simple thing. How? Have you ever seen electricity? Seen it? In your hand? No. Have you ever actually felt electricity? Have you been shot? I've been shot by 220 volts. I've been shot by 110 volts. You stack enough amperage behind it. Power. And electricity will teach you a lesson. Perspicuity. Synchronicity. How does that come into play? Let's just say, for example, synchronicity is you happen to walk up there, a wire just fell down off of a tree. It's hot as hell from a storm. Synchronicity is you walk up at that moment, there's a puddle there. Synchronicity is you have to be there at the same time as that puddle's there and the same time that wire's in it. Now, perspicuity is that you step in the puddle. What's your perspective? What's your perception? What do you see? Not with your eyes. What do you see with your mind? That's a door of opportunity. Yeah, you step in that puddle. Yeah, you could be in heaven in a minute. That's a door of opportunity. That's like standing in a mud puddle under a tree while it's storming out and lightning is going everywhere. I knew a family down in Gonzales. Unfortunately, down in Gonzales, he went to Colorado for a vacation up on top of a mountain. The storm's coming. What do they do? They run under a tree. And the son, actually, I think to this day, and it's been more than a decade, he still doesn't actually operate very well. It took him months to even get out of bed out of a coma into a wheelchair and through therapy years one of the other children was zapped and it actually struck several of them not just one perspicuity what is your perspective when the lightning starts striking what is your perspective when all of a sudden there's no food on the grocery store shelves what is your perspective when you can't get toilet paper you're going to freak out and beat somebody up and steal their toilet paper because your perspective, that's the most important thing in life. At that moment, toilet paper. Hmm. Of all things. So, if your perspective is you got to have that toilet paper, you're going to beat somebody up. But if your perspective is different, let's just say you have a different perspective and synchronicity is, look at that, you're buying all that toilet paper and look over here, there's a bunch of Kleenex. Nobody's buying Kleenex. I don't have a problem with wiping my butt with Kleenex. Do you? Actually, it's easier to take one piece and you know, regulate yourself. Now, synchronicity, perspicuity. I'm going to go on it real quickie here because there's a whole bunch of people in this United States that have never been taught how to wipe. <laughs> you buy double or you buy single ply. If you buy single ply, you have to wrap a lot more around your hand. Now, you can, some fools go in and they wrap it around there, make a big old ball, wipe one time, throw it all in the toilet and flush. Why? You got lots of toilet paper. There's a game in Vietnam. They said, you know, toilet paper is pretty valuable. You're in the swamps, you're climbing through the jungles. Man, dry toilet paper is a blessing. And the standing joke was you use one, one piece, one square. And that was because you, you tore the, you fold it and tear a little piece out of the middle of it, make a hole in the middle of that square, and you stick your finger through that, and you put that down, and you wipe yourself all and wipe it all off and pull your finger out of there. And that was one square you used to wipe your whole butt off good and use the outside of it, wipe it, clean it up a little bit. And then you take the last little piece you tore off and you run that underneath your fingernail and clean your fingernail out. That's one square of toilet paper. That's a perspective. Whew. Yeah. What a whack job explanation for a perspective. But it gives you an idea of just how important one piece of toilet paper can be in your life. Imagine if that's food, kids. It's that one grape I had the other day. Yeah, stray socks, yeah. Um, yeah, don't throw away stray socks. There's so many ways you can use stray socks besides carrying eggs in them, for example. There's so many things you can do with things if you just think that way. So why do I tell everybody salvage the past to create the future with? Because it's a perspective. 
if instead of throwing something away, you go, wow, you know, I might need that one day, um, or somebody might need that now. <sighs> well, we throw the dump and not worry about it. Gone. Well, guess what, guys? 50% of the landfills are building materials right now. And out of that, we could be building entire houses, subdivisions out of that. Tiny houses, efficient, well-made. At a time when we need to change our perspective. That's right. Again, perspicuity and synchronicity. Why is this so important now? And I'm going to try to bring this all together so I can end this because I tend to go way too long. You've been given a gift, everybody, whether you realize it or not. You're given a chance to change your perspective. Perspicuity. How? Because of the synchronicity of things. You ain't got no choice. I call that the two-by-four effect. What's that mean? That means you're riding along thinking, hey, I'm master of the world. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. And I'm on top of this tail horse here, and I'm king. I got my gold. I got my gun. I'm all ready to go. And out of nowhere, a two-by-four comes flying out of the air and knocks you off on the ground. Toast you. Your horse runs off. Your bag of gold falls in the river. As you're trying to get up, some bandits come along, steal all your crap. And you think you're, you think that's as bad as it's going to get. And then, oh my God, somebody comes along and steals your dang clothes. You went from being a king to a pauper. And God had something to do with that. How? Some of us, yeah, like you, Shannon, and myself, we grew up. I, I, my first dumpster dive I started at six years old. Why? Because from my perspective, that was opportunity. That was the opportunity to have toys because we didn't get but one for Christmas. That was the opportunity to see what was thrown away by all those other GIs whose kids weren't allowed to take their toys back either because you were allowed 2,500 pounds personal goods when you were shipped around the country one country to another as a GI and his family. I believe it was 2,500 pounds. Somehow or another my comic books were too heavy. I had a wonderful comic book collection when I left Germany. My pride and joy. I would be out on the sidewalk trading and selling comic books and raid the cafeteria when the GIs would read their comic book and leave it on the tables. We'd be out there at the doors and we'd open the door, run through so we wouldn't get in trouble, grab the comic books off the table that they left behind and run out the other door. Well, of course, I would also grab some sugar bags and eat the sugar straight out of the tops of the bags for candy because I was a poor kid. But I had a good comic collection. Then when I got copies of doubles, I'd go to the thrift store and I'd take one and sell them my copy. And I think it took two or three of me selling to them to get one of theirs back from the thrift store. So I lived out of thrift stores. I lived out of dumpsters. I lived out of dreams. Mm. As a poor kid. Now, I went on to um, too many things. Got to go in the army um, during Vietnam. Get my chance to go to college. Yeah, it's not a tough way to get it, guys. Um, but. Perspicuity and synchronicity. Vietnam's going on. I had a chance to join so I could go to college. That's the only way I was going to go to college. So I took that door of opportunity. I don't recommend it anymore. Yes, absolutely. Pleasure and pain are both a matter of perspective. I used to have a painful perspective of my childhood. I didn't understand. I needed all of that training. I needed that trauma. I needed to go through that. <sighs> Why? So I could be here now. So I could talk to you as one of you. Hey, JC. Sarah, how you doing? I've eaten out of dumpsters. 
but I still have a broken back. I've been sick. I've been in pain. Emotional, physical. My son, as many of you know, was a great boy. He wrote a song, I highly recommend you watch it on YouTube, called Song of Salvage. It's the only song he ever wrote. Actually, wrote the music for it. Yeah. I wrote this tune. The, the words were mine. His, his song. Shelly, Navy Brats. You guys didn't have to travel quite as long as we did. You guys got to stay on shore. We always made fun of the Navy when we were in the Army because they got to wear such great uniforms. Um, and the Air Force had such great PXs. That was the exchange, post-exchange. You wanted stereo equipment. You wanted camera equipment. You went to the Air Force. We didn't go to the Army base for anything, come to think of it. But we thought we were cool. I'm an Army guy. Yeah, the Song of Salvage is two versions of it, Shelley. Um, it's an epic poem I wrote. And my son did, a, a, I think, word for word with choruses he made and produced it himself on amateur equipment with a guitar and harmonica. And, mm, mm, <sighs> so it's my favorite version, needless to say. There is another version, though. It's, it's actually a very fun version. It's done with, uh, we're taking down a house in El Campo. And uh, so the house is being torn down to music. It's a Johnny Cash tune with uh, Song of Salvage. I highly recommend you watch it. It's fun. It's five women over 49 years old and uh, five kids on a, um, um, we did a seminar on how to tear down a house. It was a two-story Texas farmhouse. Had quite a reputation. At one time, it was supposed to be maybe even a hotel, uh, which was especially cool because it had one room that was all red paint. And I'll tell you what, you didn't put red paint in a room in those days unless you had some rather romantic intentions. Red was indicative of a, well, your root chakra, what gets your blood flowing, your passion. Now, again, synchronicity and perspicuity. We took that down. Oh, it's probably been, oh my goodness, nine years ago. You know, I can remember that. Mm, I'm trying, guys, I'm trying. That was one year exactly, like this coming February, of my son disappearing in Paris, France. So it was my first um, death anniversary. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a great, great video. Synchronicity and perspicuity. Pay attention, guys. The door of opportunity opens. You see it. The world could change if you just walk through that door. But your perspective is all warped. It's all screwed up. Just like mine was. I was so busy working because I'd taken a job on and I had to do that job. So when my dear love story teased me as she took the last money out of my pocket so she could go to Disneyland with her godchildren, godsons, who turned out to be later on, I found out her sons. But as she took the last dollars out of my hand, she said, you should really go see Adam over in Paris. You may never see him again. Otherwise. She was right. I never did. Synchronicity. Perspicuity, guys. I was working. Doing my job. Making my legacy for my son when he came home one day. Maybe got interested. Pay attention. Please. I'm going to go now. Y'all have a great day.